This is part in a series on uh, vitamin D, the D to D study. It's uh, a, a randomized clinical trial that was published in the New England Journal on June 7, 2019, basically showing that there was no uh, preventive effect, or at least no noticeable preventive effect, of vitamin D3 supplementation for people uh, with insulin resistance. Now, bottom line, am I Am I stopping my own vitamin D3? I take 5,000 units a day. No. Uh, why? Well, a couple of things. Number one, it didn't rule out a modest effect. Uh, it was a relatively light uh, statistical number, 0.88 uh, hazard ratio. And guess what? I never expected this to be as uh, anything other than a mild effect anyway. Uh, number two, uh, is there still a potential mechanism uh, related to folks that have significant um, vitamin D3 uh, deficiency? Yes, there is. But again, that issue, although that's uh, academically correct, it's not um, that much of an issue for most folks in the United States. Uh, yes, I, uh, I've worked with populations that uh, are at risk for type uh, for vitamin D3 deficiency, the elderly and uh, people of color, but I still, I can't remember the last time I saw a, a vitamin D3 level less than 20. I saw a vitamin D3 level way over 100 just a few weeks ago uh, for a patient coming in, overzealous uh, vitamin D3 supplementation. And again, if you have interest in that video, we got her uh, slowed down and back to a reasonable level within a, within a few weeks. That's Julie's story. Uh, you can look that up on our channel if you have an interest. But this is about the D2D study. I've covered uh, editorials on it and I've covered some other uh, lay news mention of it uh, in uh, what medical news today or something like that. Uh, here's the bottom line. It was a good uh, clinical study. They um, describe their methods. Um, and again, that's what you expect with the New England Journal. That's why it's one of, the, one of the top journals, if not the top journal of clinical medicine in the world today. Now, uh, what would be the, basically, what were they looking at? Two criteria for insulin resistance. Um, so, so here's the overall study question. If somebody has insulin resistance, will vitamin D3 supplementation prevent the uh, development of type 2 diabetes. Automatically, I walk into this study with some concern, skepticism, uh, trepidation, and here's why. Number one, how did they define insulin resistance? Um, well, they use the standard criteria, um, a fasting glucose over 100, I look at 90 or above, and a uh, Two of three things. Either that, the, the, the second, that's the first one. The second one is a positive plasma glucose level uh, with an OGTT. Now they're using the 75 gram oral glucose OGTT um, and they're looking at 140 to 199 uh, at two hours. Again, I'd look at uh, over 120 even at one hour. I'm, I'm pretty aggressive uh, with this issue, far more aggressive than the standards and far more aggressive than the standards that they used. Um, how about glycated uh, hemoglobin, hemoglobin A1C, 5.7 to 6.4. And again, I begin to talk with uh, patients about this anytime it gets over five. So I have much, much uh, stricter criteria. Now, how does that impact my interpretation of this study? Again, not so much because, bottom line, um, uh, you can't supplement your way out of a bad lifestyle. We, if we've said it once, we've said it a thousand times, and vitamin D3 is not going to prevent type 2 diabetes um, if, um, if you're obese, if you've got a BMI of 30 and uh, you're not exercising and you're eating a lot of carbs. Here's the other issue. And maybe the biggest issue out of all of this, this entire study assumes 
that you're okay if you're still just insulin resistant. No, you're not. Uh, if you're insulin resistant, you're laying down plaque and creating cardiovascular inflammation. So my goal is to back off, back off the insulin resistance itself. That's why I'm so much more aggressive and strict in terms of uh, definition of terms. Now, what was the conclusion in, on this study? Uh, again, basically they said we gave uh, people um, 4,000 units. It didn't stop, and we followed them for two and a half years. It was over 2,000 people. We randomized it to placebo or the 4,000 units. Uh, both groups went on to develop type 2 diabetes as uh, in an equal rate. Um, so in the end, what does that tell us? It's exciting to hear news in this space, but it really doesn't tell us a lot. Um, Sorry to burst your bubble if you were too excited about it. Uh, but any, And if you read my excitement. Um, anyway, if you've made it this far, thanks so much for, uh, for listening. Would you like to get your CIMT and labs all coordinated for you and done at one time over a two-day period? Um, check out our event. It's going to be in Louisville, uh, November 8th and 9th.